to the Niche Pursuits Podcast. Are you ready to discover some niche business ideas that actually work? Well, it's time for a motivational kick to jumpstart your next big idea. Here's your host, Spencer Haas. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Niche Pursuits Podcast. I'm your host, Spencer Haas from nichepursuits.com. My job on this podcast is going to be really simple. All I'm doing is recording the intro because I have a really ambitious co-host named Perrin who went out of his way while I was on vacation and reached out to somebody, got an interview, got them to record a podcast all on his own. Didn't even ask him to do it, so he went above and beyond. And so that's what I'm going to be presenting here today. Uh, It's a great interview from somebody that was able to build a large blog in the gaming industry. So a market that um, we haven't talked about a lot previously here on the podcast, but used some interesting tactics uh, to build his audience, and he's done fairly well with that. So overall, um, I just wanted to thank Perrin, and yes, I was on the beach on vacation, being a bum, while he was recording this podcast. Um, You know, I had a great time with my family, spent a few days out there in Lincoln City, Oregon, if any of you are familiar with that. The beaches are very different there than they are in, say, San Diego, Southern California. Uh, When you go to Lincoln City, you bring your windbreaker, you bring your coat, and uh, you just dip your toes in the water. It's year-round. Um, it doesn't usually get above 70 degrees. It was it hovered around 60 degrees, so it's a little bit colder. But the landscape is beautiful. We went on some great hikes and uh, had a great time. So, but I'm back ready to do some work. But I do appreciate that uh, Perrin was able to have Donish with us on the podcast from Cloth5.com. So I will let Perrin and Donish take it away from here. Thanks a lot, guys. podcast spencer the bun that he is is uh on a beach somewhere on vacation so i'm kind of picking up the slack and bringing you an interview and i think you guys will really like this one um this is uh an interview with my good friend you're gonna have to tell me how to pronounce your name because i only know you by your league of legends name danish samer it's a difficult name no one says it right yeah don yeah same with Perrin. i always had to say like (laughs) like spell mine out for my feel free to call me diff Diff, yeah. Donish or Diff the Ender? Um, so Donish is a really cool, unique case study in building a website and generating traffic because he did it sort of outside of the realm that we all are used to. So the Niche Pursuits community, as you guys all know, sort of builds websites um, with SEO tactics and tries to capture organic traffic. Uh, Diff has done basically everything but that and has had massive success. So we'll talk a little bit of numbers here um, in a couple of minutes, but you've managed to build a huge website using lots of different sort of scrappy marketing tactics, which is why we had you on. So maybe um, I will let you introduce your main site and kind of what you do and what that site does and that site's mission and kind of who your audience is. Okay, sure thing. So, as everybody said, I'm Diff. So, and the website I run is called class5.com. We specialize in League of Legends content. So, League of Legends, for those of you who don't know, is currently the world's most popular online game. And what we try to do is we aim to be the ESPN of sports, except we do it for League of Legends. So our website tries to serve up all sorts of content, so analysis of the game, you know, uh, sports coverage, tournament coverage, and just general news. And, and basically what we want to do is serve the audience high-quality content so they'll keep coming back and be the sports center of League of Legends, and that's what we aim to be. Yeah, and so maybe we should just um, hook them right now. How much traffic do you get per month? 
We average a million views per month. A million views per month, which is absolutely crazy. And none of that is, or, or most of that is through channels other than organic SEO traffic, right? That's correct. And so how did you go about doing that? So, I mean, maybe you can take us um, from ground zero to right now when you are getting a million views a month. And if you want to start, because I, I know you have a background with other gaming websites too, so if some of that is a context for this, then we'd definitely be curious about that. Okay, sure thing. So I originally started in the field let's, uh, Christmas of 2011, so it's about two and a half years now. Back then I was, you know, I had a summer vacation because my university was over, and I decided I'd get into writing about this game because I love this game and I want to contribute to the community. I started off as a volunteer on a website called Reign of Gaming, we'll use ROG for short, and I started writing. I specialized in a certain niche called math crafting, which is just mathematical analysis of the game, and people loved it. And basically I owned that niche, that, that was my niche of writing. Mm -hmm. And people loved it, and I continued working there as a volunteer, mind you. And the website got picked up by a larger organization and you know, transferred ownership and they rebuilt the site and decided, Diff, we're going to take you on, you're a good writer. So I started writing there, and as I'm doing this, I learned a lot about my audience, right? So the advantage of writing for a gaming audience or, you know, esports, League of Legends audience is the fact that due to the nature of it, most people are technologically more advanced than the average person. So, I mean, more people are going to be running Adblock, for example, right. and more people are going to be aware of community websites and just internet in general. So... As I was writing, you know, obviously I want to get my writing out. Certain things I started looking into were places like the official website forums for the game, for example, where people frequent. And then there was websites like Reddit, of course, which is a huge source of mm -hmm. content. And about April or May, actually, no, sorry, March comes before April, March of 2012, I you know, discovered the League of Legends Reddit, which had close to about 100,000 subscribers. And that means, you know, Tens of thousands of people visit that page every single day to look for League of Legends content. And I thought, you know, this might be a good place to show off my content. And I tried it out, and I hit number one of that Reddit on my first try because I used a Reddit button on the Reign of Gaming website. Mm -hmm. And what that does is when people from Reign of Gaming's website look through my article, they'll scroll down and be like, hey, this is cool. And I put a little button there, just similar to a Facebook like button, if you will, and they can look at it and be like, that's good. I'll click that power and it goes up. And on my first try, I went straight to the top of that subreddit and I hit tens of thousands of views just on my article alone. And that to me proved a concept that Reddit is powerful, you yeah. know. And from there on, I started focusing my content to cater toward Reddit's audience. You know, yeah. Reddit's audience was is a little different to the average reader. They're a bit, uh, they have a shorter attention span. You need to hook them in with more. Uh, catchy titles, if you will. And so I started learning that. After a while, um, I ran a game and they promoted me to manage the site because I was doing a good job. And basically, I started focusing more you know, on the management side, apart from the writing side. I started working with all our writers and started telling them, if you want to get your content out, you got to you know, cater it to Reddit. So basically, this is where you know, fo the people tell you to focus on your audience. This is exactly what we did because right. if we're not relying on SEO, you want your content to shine just by how good it is for your audience. Yeah. So day by day, you know, week by week, what we did was we wrote content. We got feedback because Reddit gives you comments on every single article. Just honest gets, feedback, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's honest feedback, exactly, because it's anonymous. The power of anonymity means people don't fear consequences of saying even, even the most abusive things ever. Right. And that's good as a producer because you want to hear honest opinions. And we learned, you know, people don't like walls of text, for example. People want, you know, shorter blocks of text. People want information to be more attractive. So we started making graphs. We started, you know, splitting up the content, more pictures, you know, make it, you know, space it out visually. And that grew traffic even more. And I did this in the space, you know, from April 2012. That's when I started managing ROG. And by uh, by about February 2013, so in about six to eight months, I just by doing this, the traffic tripled. Um, we started off with 
two million average page views, two and a half million when I started managing it. Uh-huh. By the time February ish, we were getting seven and a half, eight million average page views per month. Wow. Uh, part of that is obviously because we we're tailoring our content better. Se- second part of that is basically because the subreddit was growing. When we first started, you know, pr- promoting our content on Reddit, it had about a hundred thousand summoners or subscribers, I should say. <laughs> yeah. And by about February, it was close to about you know. 200, 300,000, 200,000, I believe. I can't remember the exact number, but that subreddit was growing. And by nature of that, our website was also growing because we got our content out more, people were enjoying content more. Um, and that's my time at Random Gaming, right? So I worked there until June of 2013. So and, February yeah. is when we hit starting 8 million. And by June, I, I left Random Gaming because I decided, you know, I didn't have enough freedom there. No. Obviously, I wasn't the top manager. I was more of a middle manager. Right. And... I wanted the freedom to do my own thing, so I left June 2013, and July 2013, I started Class 5 with a friend. So that's a pretty big jump to, to leave something that's already so huge to start your own thing. Um, was the mindset sort of entrepreneurial, or did you have a feeling that you could do something better? Um, well, partly because when I was working at Random Gaming, right? I mean, I don't want to, you know, badmouth my previous employer or anything. This It's just... I, I'm by nature a big thinker, ambitious. So yeah. when I had ideas and there was a lot of, lot of red tape to get those ideas through, that was you know by just frustrating. And right, I right. wanted to do my own thing, and I thought I could do a good job, if not better than Rainy Gaming. I thought I could you know be successful in my own way, and I decided to try it. And yeah, great. And so how um, did you start Cloth Five and? How did you grow it? Because you had built this skill set of marketing to a really specific audience on a really specific platform. Did those skills transfer, and did you use those same tactics to grow Cloth5? Uh, mostly, yeah. So over the time, so it's been, what, uh, two years? No, a year and a half at this point when I started Cloth5. And as you said, I had picked up a particular skill set. But what was more valuable was I picked up a lot of contacts. So, you know, people tell you the power of networking, you know, it holds true here as well. What I did more than average networking, if you will, is I built up a lot of good connections. You know, I didn't just connect with people, you know, be their friend. I went out of, me, went out of my way to help people in my past yeah. year and a half. So when people tell me, you know, hey, uh, I, I need help with this, I'd be like, you know, I'll put out time, you know, help them out, things like that. Built up quality connections so that when I started Class 5, obviously, um, we actually wanted to do it with very minimal startup funds. We didn't want to, you know, take a huge risk because when you're in this business, it is a huge risk. Yeah. So we decided, you know, we start off with a budget of a thousand dollars, no more, for a website mm-hmm. like this, and that's what we did. So I contacted all my old friends, I contacted a lot of people I know, and by this time, I was also a semi-popular figure. A few people knew me. Right. So by virtue of a reputation, I found quality writers, found popular writers. And I found good people to help me run a site. And I fa- actually found it with a friend who used to work with me in gaming. And and that, that's it. I mean, we, we launched. We, we had a launch strategy. We decided, you know, we'd get five quality pieces of content out in the first week. We'll put them out on this certain schedule, and we will use Reddit to do it. We put out a, a you know, a launch message, more of a, you know, a PR statement slash honest message, I'd say. We just said, you know, this is class five. This is what we're going to try and do. This is who we have. This is what we're doing. Here's some of the content, and people loved it. You know, uh, right. on the first day, we had fifty thousand views, which is huge. Wow! And things just went up and up from there. You know, we kept putting out quality content, and within a couple of weeks, people were commenting on our post and just saying, you know, they weren't just complimenting the article anymore. They were saying, you know, Class Five is amazing. Class Five, Class Five, Class Five. You're gonna be the next big thing, and that's huge motivation when your community, your sure, audience yeah. is saying, you know, we love your content. And yeah, we just went from there and now we're averaging a million views and happy as ever. Yeah, that's awesome. So um, let me ask you about that because you know as well as I do or and anybody because there are quite a few uh, League of Legends players in the Niche Pursuits audience. You know as well as I do that there are thousands of League of Legends blogs you know, mm. yeah. so many people have tried to do this. Um, and so aside from targeting Reddit, what do you think were your, were your main 
differentiators, the things that made people say stuff, you know, like Cloth 5 is awesome, Cloth Cloth 5 is going to be the next big thing. Um, what is it that set you apart and sort of not only just get the raw page views from Reddit, but sort of build a loyal audience? Yeah, no, fair question. So obviously when I did launch off, um, I was looking at competitors, and obviously the biggest competitor at that time was Reign of Gaming, who I just left. And mm-hmm. um, the things I noticed from other blogs, there were, you know, there's, there's new blogs cropping up basically once every month or a couple of weeks. And I, I had a look at every single one of them because they would crop up on the subreddit, they tried their best, and I would take note of what they did wrong, what they did well every right. single time. And esports is a growing industry, you'd agree. And some of the times, their websites just weren't professional enough. You know, there was either, you know, poor web design, you know, or poor quality, poor grammar, just something like that. Or they're simply doing average, you know? Yeah. They're, they're writing, you know, like, hey, I'll recap this last week's match. And I'll say, this is what happened. These are the results. And it was a good match. ABC happened. And right. that's, that's, con- that's content. That's good content. But it's average content. So one of the things I did, especially with Class 5, was decide every single bit of content we put out had to be special in the sense that it wouldn't be able to be written by anybody else. So every single time one of my writers wrote an article and for the first, you know, for the first couple of months, especially I took, you know, I spent a lot of time. I think I was working 16 hour days talking to every single one of my staff and asking them, how's your article going? What's your direction? What are you going to do to make it special? Mm -hmm. And if they had no answer, I'll try and give them an idea. And sure. if, they, if I had no ideas, I'll ask other people for ideas. We basically collaborated heavily and said, if this is your article now, can it be better if you do ABC? And they say, if they say yes, and I'm going to say, why haven't you done ABC? Right. And yeah, that's a, every article had to be special, and that's what we did. And that, that you know, grew an audience. They said, you know, Classify is amazing because Classify is the only people that do this. Sure, and I think that's worth repeating too because one of the things that we've been talking about um, on Niche Pursuits a lot is sort of going big instead of building small. And I don't know, I don't know if you know anything about the history of uh, niche sites because that's kind of you know that's not your background. But um, a lot of people in our industry used to just build these really quick burn and churn sites where we would throw up five pages of content, throw a lot of links at it, rank it in Google, and it would make a hundred bucks a month, and then we would make fifty of those. You know, mm. um, Google has changed, of course, and so a lot of us are moving from those little small sites to bigger sites, but one of the things we have to learn is how to create content that can really beat everybody else, not only on the technical factors like on-page optimization and mm-hmm. you know sort of the back and stuff, but on just being good, like being really good content. So um, I think it's worth repeating again, and I sort of uh, transcribed this as you were saying it. You said every bit of content had to be special, and what that means is it could not have been written by anybody else. And that's yeah. such a good lesson for everybody. So for Cloth 5, was it mostly statistical analysis? I mean, that's what I loved when I was reading Cloth 5 um, back mm-hmm. when you guys started, you know, which is like bringing a really strong, rigorous mathematical background to this game, which is basically a hobby that everybody loves. Hmm. Right. So, I mean, obviously when I was writing, uh, my content specialized in mathematical analysis, so statistical analysis, things like that. But obviously there's a whole other side, which is analysis of professional play. And that's not something that can be quantified in numbers. Right. So, uh, obviously, some one of the things we focused on was not just recapping games, but breaking down why games happened as such and figuring out what strategy they used, whether it's unique to that team and, you know, what other teams are doing it, what sort of counterplay is there to that strategy, and how specifically does it work? You know, just like for example, let's say you're watching a soccer game, right? You know, you might say they passed really well and they scored a goal, and that's an average recap. But a, you know, a soccer professional might say, you know, their their midline is moving well, their formations are changing dynamically, and this is how they do it. This is how they train for this. Yeah. And that's a lot more in depth, and that's the sort of thing we did. And, yeah. Yeah, and um, would that have been possible if you hadn't? created a foundation of good relationships for yourself um so i would say this because i'd form a good foundation of relationships i was able to do it for cheap or next to nothing almost yeah. less than four yeah. is nothing but absolutely you can do it with a little bit of investment you know all you have to do is find the right people find 
here's something I learned, especially with this, is just the fact that since esports is a growing industry and it's predominantly young males, if you will, who are really passionate about this, mm -hmm. if you find people who would do it for money and money alone, those are people who generally do not work well because their motivation isn't to produce the best bit of content. Their motivation is to produce the content that would get them paid. And right. That, that, that's something I, I come across multiple times. You know, people tell me, you know, like, hey, I've done ABC, you know, I'll write for you. And I say, okay, and I try to pay them and then they'll do it. But then this, they just, you know, when you're writing, you can tell if they have passion or not because yeah. it just comes down the way they write. So I look for passionate writers and good writers. And those, you know, you, you just ask people for something a little bit extra. So when I ask, when I ask people to apply, I ask them for a writing sample and I give them a specific topic, and they'll come back to me with, with a writing sample. And then I won't just judge them on that. I'll ask them to make improvements on that. And if they're passionate enough to want to improve writing sample based on the feedback, and they take it well just to work for my site, and that to me signifies, you know, this guy is really into this, and this guy is someone I can help shape and grow because I'm not just looking for people who can, you know, who come out and come in and say, you know, I'm the best I can do this and I'm going to say, right. But I'm more than happy to work with people who come in and I can use my expertise and other ex expertise of other people within the class five group to help grow that person into the best writer they can be. And that's, you know, that's a fun pursuit in itself. Sure. And I think you and I have had similar experiences, you know, um, because in that previous sort of era, of site building that I was talking about earlier, a lot of people were, um, you know, hiring services to write all of their content, or even worse than that, not necessarily worse because it was working back then, but they would outsource it to the Philippines or other countries where English wasn't even the, the first language, you know. Right. And um, the case study I did with Niche Pursuits, uh, which everybody has probably seen, is you know, one of the things that I did differently than everybody else that I saw was invest in really great writers who understood the subject or were just interesting enough and good enough at writing that um, they could sort of take a piece and run with it and make it really interesting. And I get that feedback all the time um, that, you know, really – or that the content for that site is, is really strong. And I guess you found that it's been a key differentiator for you. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about um, some of the other stuff you've done because I knew Cloth5 existed, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I had read a couple of your blog posts. I had no idea that it was really huge. I just thought it was uh, League of Legends blog who you know was doing some really great analysis. Mm -hmm. But when I started to get the feeling that you guys were ubiquitous was when I started running across your um, – YouTube videos. So maybe you right. can talk about the process of like going from a blog to deciding to produce professional video content and then whether or not it worked well or um, if it's something you would do again or if you're going to continue to do it. And, and you know, just how kind of how it plays into your whole strategy. Absolutely. So, um, yeah. So when the first couple of months, that obviously was my concern. You know, I can keep putting out quality con content, but if people just view us as just another blog, it albeit a very good blog, then that's not really satisfying my goal because remember I said I wanted to be the ESPN of League of Legends people. Right, right. So one thing I constantly did was look out for opportunities. You know, Reddit, for example, I would look out for quality content contributors. I would look out for people who knew what they're doing. And for example, with the video, I came across Lindsay who used to work with me back in Curse as uh, not a video producer. Curse is was, um, the company who now owns Rain of Gaming. For yes, yes, sorry, I should make that clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I came across her, and I realized she was now doing freelance work. I asked Lindsay and said, "Lindsay, Cloth5 is looking to grow. We're looking to grow your brand, help you grow as a person." And we told her, "Come on board. We'll give you creative freedom. We'll give you the revenue off the videos." And she said, "Okay." And we had her making some videos, and I started reaching out to different people. And one of the th things that we came across, or I should say, one of the people that came to us was Mike from Zam Network, and he mm -hmm. oh, he helps manage Lolking or manage the media for it. And he said, Class Five does great analysis. 
and Klaus Pye's got a great video producer in Lindsay. And she, he said, would you like to work with us to produce some content? And I said, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we signed a contract to produce some uh, content for him. And that's what we do for our video. And that's the secondary source of income for us. And yeah, that's video. And in terms of article writing, we've been doing that. We also had a brief venture into a consulting offshoot, if you will. One of the oh. things we did was we realized our strength was analysis. And within analysis and a growing industry, one of the things we wanted to do was offer our services as analysts to teams. So we actually contacted LCS teams. So LCS right. is the professional league for League of Legends, right? We contacted a team teams from there we reached out to them and asked them you know here's what we do here's our extremely in-depth reports like we gave them a sample of a report and here's the data we can mine would you be interested in having this data for your team on you know in consulting base they say that and they said okay so we charged the fee we produced reports we gave it to them they loved it and we did that for a while unfortunately the team that contracted us ended up um, disbanding after a while which was unfortunate but right. yeah, so I mean, the goal for us is to always keep our eye out, look for things we're good at that we can expand into videos, analysis. Our our base strength is analysis, and any opportunity we see to expand our analysis is something we'll definitely look into and try doing. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So you are so one of your goals now is to diversify income by offshooting or by gathering opportunities that sort of feed off of your base differentiator, which is strong analysis. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things we've also like been lucky enough to secure is a quality ad network and some really good hosting deal for our web hosting. So we've actually, you know, worked out a deal with another site, for example, where they pay us a small fee for our ad network and hosting, and that works well. We've also been trying to acquire some sites who are in League of mm -hmm. Legends. You know, we've tried to work with other websites who have launched or attempted to launch 3v3 websites. 3v3 is a different game mode in League of Legends. Mm -hmm. And yeah, basically we try to expand our brand in any way possible. And yeah. You know. Yeah, so let's talk about income. Um, I know you don't want to share the numbers. Um, but maybe we can talk about what's what's working for you. I'd like to hear about your ad network and what network it is and how you found them and um, sort of what revenue streams you find most profitable. Okay, sure. So um, one of the first things I said in early in this interview, if you will remember, is the fact that when you're dealing with a gaming audience, they all run ad block or a huge majority of them run ad block. Right, right. So ad revenue is not as high as you would have from another niche, if you will. So, apart from getting, you know, a great ad provider who was a app ad Nixus, app Nixus based ad provider, and getting revenue from there, which is, you know, a few hundred a month, which is, not, it's average, right? Right. And we decided we try, we'd have to try different uh, sources of revenue. So, we tried the video content for the contract, we tried consulting, and they gave us money, and we also tried... Um, subcontracting our hosting and ad and that works we've also tried um, having people work with us invest and for our growth that's worked and basically day to day month to month what keeps us going is ad revenue at the end of the day and right. that's the challenge for us basically as a gaming website because our audience is more savvy tech savvy and yeah yeah no that makes sense um, so before we move on to like sort of the the future of the business, mm -hmm. um, I'm still a little bit curious about your network of writers and what they are doing and sort of how you manage them. So, do you have you know one writer, six writers, thirty writers, and then um, are are you the content manager? Are you the one coming up with the ideas and managing the writing process, or is it more? autonomous where they all kind of have access to the site and they're good enough that they can write their own things or how do you do it okay fair enough so as i said i started last time a uh, lot we started early last year july 2013 mm -hmm. mid last year i should say um initially i had a lot of time because 
I'm actually a full-time university student, and when I started it, it was a month between semesters, and I had all the time in the world, and I spent 16, 18 hour work days, and I was the content manager, I was you know, helping them write, I was editor, I was marketer, I was doing everything. But obviously that's not sustainable, so one of the things I first initially did was try to set up a structure, and we did set up a structure. So what we had was managers for different departments within class five. So we had a blog section, and the blog section is where we do our analysis writing, you know, theorizing, things like that. We have an esports section, which covers professional play. Anything to do with professional play, that's what the esports section does. We have an art section, who helps produce art for our other two write, uh, writing sections, so that their articles look awesome, and also helps produce art assets for our videos, or mm -hmm. what else we do, brochures, things like that. Right. And we also have a editor section, who help edit other articles. And what we did was found people, enough people to have within each division. And within each division, I found a person who was skilled enough, passionate enough, and had the time to manage each section, right. or sometimes to manage for each section. And what I'd do was I would have weekly meetings every, with every one of those managers, ask them how it's going, what's happening, and they would give me updates, give me any issues they had, give me goals, Sorry, I'd set them goals and tell me how they achieved those goals. And basically, we set a, a goal and a target for each week, and we went forward, you know, saying, you know, this time we want this to work, this time we want this to work. And we kept working on it, iterating over and over until things got better and better. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and that, that, that's a, that saved a lot of time for me because, in, in, in essence, it's autonomous. All I'm doing is checking up to make sure things are running the way I want to, which they usually are. So that's the good news. Yeah, and that's pretty incredible. You started from scratch uh, to now you are basically a general manager and your obligation is to have weekly meetings with a couple of your um, managers that are under you and yep. your website has a million visitors a month. Yep, that's, that's amazing. Uh, really not bad. And to do this. Oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say that's that's sort of the goal for a lot of us, I think, you know, and my blog was on different. I put in a lot of hard work up front and now it basically runs itself. Um, hmm. So I think our strategies are kind of similar and I think that's sort of the, the, the goal for a lot of our audience is to front load all of your work so that you can create a passive asset or a mostly passive asset in the future. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and as a full-time university student, this is – I. This is what I needed to work towards. It wasn't just a luxury. It yeah, was a necessity. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, totally. And I'm sure it's the same with people who have full-time jobs and that kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what um, – so before I ask – okay, I have one more question I decided. So you built Cloth5 with a highly specialized audience and – Basically, by having a really deep understanding of those people, what they like, and how to market to them. And I have done a similar thing with my newest project, um, Philo. Mm -hmm. And I've had similar results. You know, like we had a day with like 17,000 people or something. And almost all of my users have come from Reddit. Um, so you and I both know that Reddit is extremely powerful. Um, right. my, my question is. Do you and I, and I know your expertise is in gaming related stuff, but outside of gaming, do you think Reddit is a viable strategy for someone who has a website on something that is not gaming related? I would say if it's technology related or anything that appeals to young males, Reddit is a good place because mm -hmm. that's predominantly who visits it. But apart from that, I would say find a forum if you will, because most most niches have forums. Yeah. Apart from yeah, so like. Find a forum that deals with your niche and talk to them. Figure out what they want and right. produce content they need. That's what I'd say. And then give it to them and through that channel, probably, right? Yeah, probably. I mean, if the forum allows it, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I think that's something that a lot of people don't want to hear, you know, because SEOs, myself included, when I started in this business, sort of had to have a tendency to um, – want to sit back and just watch the money roll in and one of the attractive things about seo is that it's the only business with no clients you know it's like you create a blog and you get organic traffic through google and uh that's it you know yeah. and sort of that's what makes your success so i think it's something that people don't want to hear sometimes is that um 
you have to, or that one good way of doing it is really engaging with the people who are active in that community. But I think you're a really good example of how insanely powerful that can be if you do it correctly and you optimize your product for that. Yeah, the way I view it is you can do all the SEO in the world and you'll rank top of Google, but if somebody interested in your content clicks through you to your website and they see something that doesn't appeal to them, they're not going to come back. So all your SEO work is going to go to waste. So I always say do both if you right. can and right. do as much as you can, as if you will, and that's successful follow. Yeah, and you know, the opposite is true. If your content's bad, they're going to leave and never come back, but if your content's good, they might link to it or share it on Facebook or tweet it exactly. or, or, or whatever. So it's sort of an exponential process both ways. Yeah, don't aim for website success. Aim for the success in terms of what your content is. You know, aim to write good things, aim to design it well, aim to do it well, and success will follow. Yeah, and, um, you know, for you listeners out there who have heard our podcast with Hayden Miyamoto, and um, I don't know when this one will be published, but it will probably be published after our podcast with Matt Paulson, they said similar things, that your first priority should be solving a problem for your audience, and um, everything else should be kind of secondary. So I think you are yet another good example of that. Yeah. So what um, what does the future hold for, for Cloth 5? I mean, you are just graduating from university, and you have this killer website. Um, what is next for you, and what is next for this sort of uh, small business you've built, and where do you go from here? Uh, well, obviously, we're trying to look to grow. Um, and the things we're doing is recently we had our first year anniversary, a week ago, in fact. We redesigned our website. We're getting back uh, on the map as a, as a big force, mm -hmm. and that's growing traffic some. And as I said, we're going to keep our eyes peeled for any opportunities. We're going to be trying those. And in terms of personal goals in the future, I obviously am looking for graduate jobs and you know looking for a good place where I can exercise my skill set. And depending on the job I get, I may or may not have time for class five. And in that case, I will. Have, may have to part with it, and that's going to be a very tough day. Yeah. But hopefully that day never comes. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, I guess in closing, I kind of want to go through the things that I found the most interesting that you said that I think are good lessons and good takeaways for our audience. Mm -hmm. um, so the first one I think that really stuck with me is that you aimed super high. Being the ESPN of esports is a really crazy goal, but that sort of drove everything that you did, including the things that really different, differentiated you to your audience. Um, second one is that you built a network of really great connections by helping people. So before you even started Cloth5, you had not only made acquaintances with key people, but like really made friends with them, and you did that by helping, which I think is really important, um, especially in the online world where it can be difficult to you know meet face-to-face -face and really make connections, that helping people can help you build a really strong network. Um, nice. The other thing is um, the intense quality of the content can really drive a website from obscurity into the spotlight and um, you know having every piece of content be truly special and spending time on that and spending time with your writers on that was something that I think is really important and also um, aside from Reddit just going where the eyeballs are which is sort of an age, an age old adage in the marketing world anyway but really going with the where the eyeballs are in your market talking to those people and getting your content in front of them um, in whatever way you can is there anything else do you think that I missed? Um, I'd say just be a good guy, honestly. Uh, too many people yeah. think you have to backstab people to get high. I honestly say do good favors for people. You know, I'm, I'm not saying take your time out, take weeks out to help somebody, but if you, if it's within convenience for you to help somebody, do it, and you will build up a good network of people who can help you when the time comes, and that's a lesson for life, if not just a business. Totally. I totally agree, and I've had similar experiences, um, especially with the Penny Shaved. You know, I got a whole bunch of links, not because I went out and harassed people, but because I wrote a bunch of great reviews on blogs that I thought were really quality and that I read all the time and said, you know, my first interaction with those people was like, hey, I think your blog is awesome, and I gave you a link, and that was it, you know. 
So yeah, exactly. Smaller scale, but kind of the same thing. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, thanks, man. Is there anything you wanna you wanna plug other than class five? Uh, well, obviously, I want to say thank you to every single person who has worked with Cloth5 or helped make Cloth5 a big thing. Uh, yeah. you know, I couldn't do it yeah. without them, so thank you for that. And I want to thank my audience, obviously, for supporting us. And, yeah, thank you for taking the time to talk to me, and thank you to Niche Pursuit's audience for hearing me out. Awesome. All right, Diff, well, this is another one in the books, and we appreciate it, and um, we'll talk to you later. All right, see ya. Yep, thanks a lot. Thank you.